Yeah, at first I thought maybe it's just toy gun. Then I thought, no, yeah, this is too loud. Disbelief during a shooting on a North Texas college campus, what a tutor says she saw firsthand, and what students were thinking as they ran from their classrooms. Just a misunderstanding. A man accused of threatening to shoot up a Dallas police station explains his side of the story from behind bars. Plus, so much better. A little girl released from the hospital after a terrifying water rescue, who her parents hope she will meet someday soon. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I'm Ken Molestina. And I'm Kaylee O'Kelly in for Gilma Avalos. Chaos today at a community college in Irving after what was first thought to be an active shooter situation. I knew it was a gunshot. And, just, and then I saw everybody running and I just ran. Police now treating this investigation as a murder suicide, saying a suspect shot and killed a woman before turning the gun on himself. And we do have team coverage this afternoon for you. Joel Thomas spoke to students as they frantically left campus. But we start with Robbie Owens. And Robbie, you talked to a woman who saw this shooting firsthand. Well, Ken and Kaylee, yes, the danger here is past, but as you can see behind me, it is still an active scene with police here on site. A spokesperson just wrapped up a briefing just moments ago telling us that they have, in fact, identified the shooter in this morning's murder-suicide here on campus. Officers are speaking with that man's family right now, so they are not yet releasing his name. The campus, meanwhile, remains closed and will remain off limits at least through tomorrow. Let's take you back to the beginning. Now, police were called to the scene just after 1130 on reports of an active shooter on the campus. The campus here was swarmed with officers and the campus was placed on lockdown. Students and staff were told to shelter in place with doors locked and lights off. Sadly, our world is such that both police and college campuses have protocols in place for such situations. Still, it is human nature to think that the unthinkable always happens somewhere else. This longtime North Lake employee here was heading to the parking lot when she saw the shooting unfold. I just saw a guy, a girl was sitting in a chair and a guy standing in front of her shot her three times. And I immediately ran back to the room I'm working. Now, we will hear more from that witness tonight at 6, what she plans to do next to try and erase that awful memory. We'll have that for you tonight at 6. I'm Robbie Owens reporting live on the campus of North Lake College in Irving. Now, my colleague Joel Thomas has been talking to students. He joins us now with their reaction to this morning's violence. Joel. Now, this is the perimeter the police have set on the east side. We've seen some traffic now leaving the campus, but no traffic has been allowed in past this point as after the alarm was sounded for people on campus to seek shelter. We were in building A and we went into a closet. We were there for an hour and we barricaded the door until the police came. It was very scary. I was there with my wife and about 25 other people in that small room. Students and teachers barricaded doors, turned off lights, and huddled quietly in the backs of rooms and closets. Many were there for well over an hour as they waited for officers to give them the all clear so they could walk away from the campus. It was a time consuming task as officers searched and cleared every room of every building. Many spent that time terrified, not knowing if at any minute a shooter would barge through the door. While we were locked in there, just agony just pray. I mean, I, I literally saw people praying that they were going to get out. I mean, I was too. Um, it's, I mean, that's the first time I've ever been, you know, in a situation like that, and uh, I'm thankful enough that I can make it out. That wait was just as agonizing for people who are standing here not knowing if their loved ones were on campus and okay. I'll have their stories coming up at 5 o'clock. Reporting live, Joel Thomas, CBS 11 News.